Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss on chapter 6, Circular Motion. In this video, we will discuss on 6.2, Centripetal Force. So before we go to Centripetal Force, we recall back what is the Centripetal Acceleration. Okay, Centripetal Acceleration is the accelerations of the object moving in a circular path whose the direction is towards the center of the circular path. So the direction is always pointed into the center of the circular path and the magnitude is equal to the square of the speed divided by the radius. So we can write it as centripetal acceleration is equal to V square over R or we can write it as R omega square. Okay, because we know that the relationship between V and omega because we know that V equals to R omega. Okay, so we can write as R omega square or V square over R. Okay, next, the directions. The directions of centripetal acceleration is always point towards the center of the circle. Okay, centripetal means it's a central seeking. Okay, and the direction also always perpendicular to the linear velocity. Okay, so when we know that linear velocity is always tangent to the sphere. And the directions of the centripetal acceleration is always point into the, cen the center. Okay, so the directions of the accelerations and the linear velocity is always 90 degree. Okay, so it's perpendicular meaning it's always 90 degree. Next, we will go to centripetal force. Centripetal force according to the Newton's second laws, an object that is accelerating must have net force acting on it. Therefore, an object moving in a circular must have a force applied to it to keep it moving in a circle. That is, the net force is necessary to give it centripetal accelerations. Okay, so therefore, Newton's second laws can be applied to circular motion where F net equals to MA. Okay, so we substitute A, the centripetal accelerations, into the equations. Therefore, our centripetal force will equal to M V square over R, or we can write as M R omega square. So the centripetal force is defined as the force required to maintain a body in a circular path or the motion. The centripetal force is not a new kind of force. The term centripetal merely describes the motions of the net force is directed towards the center of the circle. Okay, so meaning that again for the force, the direction always directed towards the center of the circular path, similar like our centripetal acceleration. The centripetal force can be supplied by a variety of forces, for example, friction, tension, gravitational force, and also normal force. Okay, let us try questions. Exercise 2. A motorbike moving with constant speed. So they give us the value for V, constant speed, V equals to 20 meter per second in a circular track of the radius 25 meter. Calculate the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is equal to V square over R or we can write R omega square. So since we have V and R, so we can use V square over R. Okay, so we use V square over R to find the centripetal acceleration 20 square over 25. Okay, so we will get 16 meter per second square. Okay, next one is the time taken for the bike to complete one revolution. So when we say one revolution, meaning that is equals to two pi. Okay, for one revolution is equal to two pi. Okay, so we can use the equation. Uh, our equation V equals to R omega where we have um, V is equal to 20 R is equal to 25 so you can find omega omega is equal to 20 over 25 ok 
Okay, so 20 over 25, you will get 0 0.8. But this is not the answer that we want to find. Eh? We want to find the time taken for one revolution. Okay, so omega equals to 2 pi over t. We want to find the period for one revolution, the time taken to complete one revolution. So therefore, our period is equal to 2 pi over omega, 2 pi over omega, 0 0.8. So 2 times 3 the pi over 0 0.8, you will get 7.85 second. Okay. So next, we go to the next question. Question number two. An object is placed on a rotating machine with the radius. So the first information we have is R, 8 meter. If the angular displacement of the object, theta is 0 0.3 T squared. Okay, where theta is the measure in a radian. And when T equals to 5 seconds, find the angular velocity. So angular velocity here we are referring is the omega. Okay? And we know that omega equals to theta over t. Theta is equals to 0 0.3 t squared. Eh? Okay, so when t you substitute inside here, t equals to 0 0.3 t theta equals to 0 0.3 and then t you substitute 5 squared. Okay, so if you press calculator, uh, 0 0.3 times 25, you will get 7.5 okay, radian. So you substitute here, 7.5 radian. And the time taken is uh, 5. Okay, so 7.5 over 5, you will get 1.5 radian per second. Next, we want to find tangential linear velocity meaning we want to find v okay so it depends on um, what are the informations we have so now we have the radius and also we have the angular velocity so we can use v equals to r omega where we have r equals to 8 omega is 1.5 so if you press calculator you will get 12 meter per second Next is the centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration, we have two equations. The first one is v squared over r, or we can use r omega squared. Okay, so both also you can get the value. Okay, so if let's say we use r omega squared, okay, we use this equation. r is 8, omega is 1.5 squared. So if you press calculator, 8 times 1.5 squared, you will get 18 meter per second squared. Okay, if you want to use v squared over r, you will still will get 18 meter per second squared. You get the same answer. Okay, next question is uh, a car initially travel. Okay, travel to the eastward, turns north. Uh, when it comes to C, it turns to north by traveling in a circular path. Okay, in a uniform speed as a figure. The length of the ABC, ABC here is equals to 235 meter and the car completes the turn in 36 seconds. Okay, so what are the information we have here is we have S equals to 235 meter and the time taken is equals to 36 seconds. So now they ask us to calculate determine the accelerations when the car is at B located at the angle of 35 degree okay so we want to find the accelerations at here okay so what is the accelerations equation for accelerations is equal to V squared over R or we can use uh, R omega squared okay but since we have S and T so we can find the the linear velocity where it is equal to S over T. Okay, so S is 235 meter, T is 36 second. So the linear velocity is equal to 6.53 meter per second. Okay, so we can substitute inside 6.53 squared. Okay, how about the radius? Okay, here if you refer from point A to point C, this is the uh, 
as 235 and the angle of course A to C is 90 degree okay it's 90 degree okay so this is equals to uh, 90 degree 90 degree actually equals to pi over 2 okay because 1 pi is 180 so 90 degree is pi over 2 so we can find this is s this is r we can find r so the relationship between s and r is s equals to r theta where r is equal to s over theta okay so our s is 235 theta because it's 90 degrees so we can write as pi over 2 so therefore the radius is 149 meter then you substitute here 149 and finally we will get the acceleration equals to 0 0.286 meter per second square okay next one they ask us to find the car speed so actually car speed is equal to just now what we already uh, did s over t where is equal to 235 over 36 seconds so the answer is still the same 6.53 meter per second next we go to question number 3c okay question number 3c is the average accelerations okay average accelerations uh, during the 36 second interval so we know that we want to find average uh, not centripetal so average accelerations a average is equal to change of the velocity over time or we must take v final minus v initial okay or v minus u over t so if we refer back to the diagram just now okay so they give us the velocity the final is going upward okay so we want to take v minus u uh, we want to take v minus u okay so we can draw v is going up and u actually is to the right okay u is to the right but because it's negative u so negative u it will move to the left okay so this is negative u this is v final velocity minus the initial velocity so therefore our um, velocity the resultant here this is the resultant delta v where is equal to v minus u okay so we want to find what is the resultant velocity okay so resultant velocity because we have a y and also x component we can use theorem pythagoras to find okay so we have a change of v is equal to our velocity is equal to just now is 6 point okay so it's equal to 6.53 square plus negative 6.53 square square root okay so y negative because here is v minus u so u you must put negative and finally the velocity change of the velocity is equal to 9.26 okay so you substitute inside here 9.26 and the time taken is given in an interval of 36 so we substitute 36 okay so finally we will get answer is equal to 0 0.256 meter per second okay next we want to find this is only the magnitude okay so we need to find the direction eh, because the questions give us the direction so of course directions we can use tangent theta to find tangent theta equals to v y over v x okay or here we are referring is our u okay uh, so this is v x so v y is uh, the velocity of the the final velocity is equal to 6.53 and uh, initial velocity also equals to negative 6.53 but we model this okay so tangent at tangent 1 actually the angle theta is equal to 45 degree okay okay 45 degree here actually shows only the basic angle so how we know at which quadrant so you must go back to the diagram where v is positive and then negative u is to the is to the left 
okay so positive and negative meaning that the angle here is equals to the angle is at the third quadrant here okay so therefore we can say the answer is uh, is equals to the magnitude is 0 0.256 meter per second square and uh, negative don't need okay 45 degree above the negative x exit okay so that's all for today thank you okay so in the next video you can uh, we will continue with the horizontal and the vertical centripetal force okay so see you on next video thank you